Hello and welcome to our conversation on financial statements. In today's presentation, we will get into the financial statements and the performance of uh, one of the well-known companies of India, that is PC Jewelers. Um, but before we get into that company, let us see the uh, off late, the company was in news for all wrong reasons. SBI has moved insolvency plea against uh, the company. Uh, PC dwellers have been receiving loan recalls from various banks. State Bank of India takes the company to NCLT. So there is a possibility of company being declared as insolvent. So what's going wrong with this uh, company? So let us understand and observe the financials of this company. But before we see the financial, let us also see the market. You know, Market is also responding to this uh, negative news in the market. Um, for example, uh, in October 22, the price was 98, whereas in October 23, the price came down to 31. In fact, it even, it was 587, the highest, uh, it reached highest in 2018. And from there onwards, the price has been moving southwards. So is this the case with, uh, uh, is it the case with the other companies? Uh, may not be. So we will understand not only PCJ, but also on and off compare the uh, performance with Titan company. The Titan, we can see that during the same period, the price has gone up from 806 to 3,260 uh, in October 2023. Whereas in October 2023, the price of PCJ has come down from 98 to 31. So let us understand the background of this company. Uh, PCJ was established in 2005. It's a Delhi-based uh, company um, into retails and exporting the jewelry. The product range includes gold, diamond, and other jewelry and silver articles. The company is promoted by Mr. Balram Gargan family and is listed in GSE and NSE. The company was incorporated on uh, 13th April 2005 as a private limited company, then got converted to public limited company in 2011 and name was changed to PC Jewelers limited the shareholding pattern we can see that shareholding as on 30th june 2023 54 percent of the shareholding is the with the promoters public holds 42 percent the others are very small percentage and um, so we can observe that uh, we can see that promoters stake is significantly high in this company uh, the nature of the business, you know, the nature of this jewelry business uh, is such that they are very high capital intensive business. Uh, being in retail business, the company has to maintain high level of inventory, both in terms of uh, raw gold and also as a stock of various design to cater to the taste and requirement of various customers. And this is not just the case with PCJ. This is a, a case with other players also. So as a result of which, the inventories from uh, uh, the available information, we have used the screeners data, inventories as a percentage of total assets, all through have been quite high. You know? So it is around 76% in 2023 so it was always above 50% of the total assets were in the form of inventory. And this is the case with Titan also. We can see that Titan is more or less similar percentage, you know, 56% to 75%. So by default, this industry is a high inventory dependent industry. 
because the inventory is high, so there is a, a possibility that if you don't manage the inventory properly, if the corresponding sales don't go up, then the company obviously will face a problem. So that's precisely what's happening. The problem of inventory management in uh, the title. Um, the running a jewelry business is quite capital intensive. Uh, we need lots of money on a daily basis to maintain the inventory. So lots of cash to know what is required. As long as sales are going up, it's not a problem. But in case of PCJ, the sales has been uh, falling significantly. No, uh, from 10,000 crores in 2018 to 3,000 crore in 21. And we'll see more of that in the, of the recent years. As a result, the day sales inventory, that means inventory turnover has actually gone up significantly. So the, the, the company seems to be not able to convert the inventory into uh, sales. As a result, you know, uh, as expected, the profit before tax of the company uh, has started becoming negative of late. One of the reasons uh, <clears throat> for this negative uh, PBT is actually the fall in the sales. As we have already mentioned, sales have come down from you know, 9,486 crore in 2008, 2018, up to that year, sales were increasing. After that, consistently, sales has been falling. So if the inventory is not managed properly because of the sales, as a result, the profit before tax will definitely expect it to fall. But here, along with the in decrease in the sales, increase in inventory, one more problem has been observed in PCJ, that is the rising interest. All through these years, when the sales were falling, inventory was rising, the one very important component on the income statement, that is interest, has been consistently rising from 77 crore to 499 crore growth has gone up. So is that a problem? It's not a problem as long as we are able to cover the interest. So if the interest is being covered by the profit before interest and tag, then it's not a problem. But that's not happening in case of PCJ. We can see that the interest coverage ratio of PCJ was 4.3 has come down to 0.26. In other words, the profit was four times of interest in 2012, but now it is only 0.26, less than one. So that means the profit is even less than the interest profit before interest. But as that is not the case with uh, Titan, Titan all through has maintained the coverage ratio as about 15. That means the profit is about 15 times on average of the interest. So rising interest, falling interest coverage ratio, rising in inventory is definitely creating problem for this company. Is, is it the case, uh, let us see with uh, uh, Titan, as, as I mentioned, uh, the interest coverage ratio is, is in a very good position here. And this is attributed to the operating profit. The operating profits of the company is, is, is not only uh, very high, but has been consistently rising. Therefore, unlike PCJ, the Titan's interest coverage ratio is, is, uh, is in a very, very strong position. That means the risk of insolvency, uh, if you see through the lens of interest coverage ratio, the risk of insolvency of uh, PC dweller is significantly higher than the risk of insolvency for the Titan company, despite the fact that both are in the same nature of the business. 
So this brings us to you know, this raises a very important question. Is it possible that uh, PCJ is more a liability driven company uh, than the Titan? So let us observe their capital structure at a very broad level, uh, equity and liabilities. What is important to observe that Titan around 48% of the total sources are in the form of equity. In case of uh, PCJ, also 47%. They were always saying liabilities are around 52 and 53%. This is, and this is not the case with only one year. The capital structure of both the companies are more or less same. In other words, the, the debt equity ratio will be more or less same if you take all liabilities. So I'm not, at this juncture, I'm not dividing the liabilities. So liabilities as a percentage of total sources of these two companies seems to be more or less same. So obviously questions should come to your mind when the liabilities are more or less same, how come the interest coverage ratios of or the or the uh, the ability of the firm to meet the interests of PCJ is much lower than the interest coverage ratios of uh, tight. As we have already mentioned, maybe because of the falling uh, sales, maybe because of falling profit. Then that, that is one of the reasons which we already have identified. So uh, this, this has been already identified, the falling sales, rising interest. Uh, whereas in case of uh, Titan, um, this is interest is rising, but the sales are also equally rising. So, so this is an important understanding that uh, ICR of Titan may be high because the higher sale. Is there any other reason? For example, if you see the amount of interest, you know, the interest of sale uh, a Titan is also rising interest of uh, uh, PCJ is also rising. So can we get some idea about the composition of liabilities? Now we, we saw that the liabilities of these two companies, uh, the capital structure of these two companies uh, look, look alike. Huh? About 53% of the total sources of PCJ is liability and 52% of total sources of Titan is liability. However, if you observe the composition of liabilities, the Titan and PCG will be different. What are we seeing here? In case of Titan, about 25% is short-term borrowings and 27% is uh, other liabilities. Whereas in case of PCJ, about 48% is short-term borrowings. Only 4% is the other liability. So, so therefore, we may need to examine that is the interest burden of PCJ high relatively because of the composition of liabilities. The composition of liabilities, PCJ's huge amount of liabilities are in the form of short them borrowings, whereas a significant part of the liabilities of Titan is other liabilities. So what are these other, other liabilities, you may ask. Now, this is, uh, if, you, if you see over a period of time for PCJ, uh, the short-term borrowings are accounting for a significant part of the total borrowing. 90%, 95% of the total borrowings are in the form of short-term borrowing. Of course, this is from the data from screeners. I did not check it with the annual reports of that company, okay? So, though the amount of interest of these two companies are rising from 44 to 300 for Titan, 77 to 499 or 500 for PCJ, that you can see that amount of interest for of uh, PCJ is, is significantly high. And 
and as as I'm saying that it may be because of the composition of the liabilities. Uh, this other liabilities, you know, um, though not very explicitly visible in the annual report, both uh, uh, all the jewelry uh, companies uh, falling in this category, they use uh, some interesting types of loans like gold metal loans, you know, which, which is relatively lesser cost uh, than the other conventional borrowings. That may be the reason we can see that in case of uh, Titan is about 27%, in case of PSG is only 4%. So therefore, what this significantly high percentage of short-term borrowings may be creating problem for PCJ. What are these liabilities for PCJ? The two things, one is a current liability. This is from their annual report. Huh? So we can see that the, uh, the current liabilities of PCJ have very high rate of interest, which is 12% to 23%. 11% to 19%, 13% to 16%, and the amount of borrowings outstanding as on 31st March ranges to 3,500 to 3,600 crores of borrowings of that. No wonder that interest burden is very, very high. No wonder that the companies with a falling sales, falling profit, high rate of interest, if there will be default. So there is every possibility that the loan providers of these borrowings, uh, the givers of these borrowings will definitely be concerned. And that is what we are able to see. In the news, we saw that a large number of banks, including State Bank, PNB, UCO, Union Bank, they're all now taking the records to NCLT to recover this. Uh, we can see that um, SBI, PNB, and UBI account for 30 to 15 and 16 percent, respectively, of the total short term borrowings of this company. And these banks are what which are putting up to this particular company. And that is sending that negative signal to the market. No wonder that higher interest, lesser sales, lower PBT is actually becoming worrisome for this company. But the only positive thing that we are seeing here that despite the problem, the promoters holding over this period is more or less same over a period of time. So, so that means there is a fundamentally this business is strong. The competitors like Kalyan Dwellers, Titan are doing well. So with, with some good inventory management and the debt management, there is every possibility that the company may bounce back uh, and do well. Though in the short term, the negative performance of the company may continue because of huge amount of interest and the pressure to pay off the uh, loans and high uh, possibility of the company getting bankruptcy. But this is sending a definitely a positive signal. The promoters are not yet started getting panicky. And who knows, they may pump in more money to revive this or, uh, company. So overall, we are able to see that the company's performance, um, bad financial performance is due to bad inventory management or a poor inventory management, falling sales, rising interest costs, and the rising interest costs because of the composition of liabilities, not just because of high debt, high, high leverage, because other players in the industry also have high leverage. Overall, it's, it's worth observing this company for some more time to see how this organization is going to come out of this debt trap and uh, bounce back uh, on the 
normal financial statement basis and also on the market. Thank you very much.